This is 3.3, .3, which is rational functions of the form, and then we have something that looks like this. So that's a little bit different. I mean, normally we see a 1 on the top, but now we have a linear function. I mean, not only do we have a linear on the top, we actually have a linear on the bottom as well. And it could look something like this. Do you see that? Linear and linear. Okay, now this graph might look slightly different than what we've seen already, but it's not really that different. In fact, um, why don't I show you that when we find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, they're actually the same thing. So the vertical, we always looked at the denominator. What are the restrictions on x so that we don't get a 0 as the denominator? Well, x can't be negative 5 over 2. So that means that our vertical asymptote is x equals to negative 5 over 2. And do you remember how we put it into the table? We got to figure out our end behavior by testing a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. Well, that's basically the same thing for this type of function. We do it the exact same way. In fact, we also do the horizontal asymptote the exact same way. You're still going to test a really large number and a really small number into your x's. So one at a time, a huge number like a thousand into both of these guys. Figure out your answer and you get this number. Now if you take negative 1,000 and put it into your x's and then you figure out the answer, I also got this number. So you always want to test with both because, I mean, what if you get one number and then you get a different number? So that's like a problem. You, you kind of, that should be an indicator that you did something wrong. Okay, now something I want to bring your attention to is um, when we had a 1 at the top, um, so when we were dealing with the reciprocal of linear functions, we always got a zero as our horizontal asymptote. And that's just a general rule that if you have a one on the top, you're going to get like zeros for your horizontal asymptote. But notice that we didn't this time. We actually got a number. So our horizontal asymptote this time is y equals to one half. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you several different ways of finding the horizontal asymptotes uh, for this guy. Okay, so you could do it this way, or um, there are several different ways you could do it. Um, one is a, a slightly more difficult way, and then the other one is easy. But I'll show you the harder way, obviously, first, so that when you do it the easy way, it'll be appreciated. Okay, so this is just a slide that's showing you, again, that you get linears on the top and bottom of the function, and it's going to um, have certain effects on your asymptotes. Okay, so let's start with the more difficult way. Here's the horizontal asymptote, and what I'm going to show you is two examples. What you're going to do is you take all the terms. So this is a term, that's a term, and this is a term. So anything separated by a plus or a minus is a term. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take each of these terms and you're going to divide them by the x that has the highest exponent. So these two both have the same exponent, which is x to the power of 1. That means we're going to divide each of these guys by x to the power of 1. The x is right here. Here is the x, and that is the 5. So notice that I've divided each of them by x to the power of 1. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce. So let's break that down. x divided by x is just 1. Again, this is also going to be a 1. And since I can't break that down, I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, so this is our final answer for our function once we've divided all the terms by the x with the biggest degree. Now we're going to use it in order to figure out our horizontal asymptote. So we do it the same way that we did the warm-up, where we start subbing in a positive, negative, um, huge number, and then we see what our horizontal asymptote is. Okay. So sub in a very big number into wherever you see an x. So I only see an x right here. No more x's, right? 5 divided by 1,000 is going to be like 0. Point something, 0, 0, 0, which is basically like a 0. So 1 over 1 plus 0 is just 1. Okay, so that's giving me an indication that our horizontal asymptote is a 1, but let's just make sure by subbing in a negative um, number so like negative a thousand so negative a thousand means when we divide it we're going to get negative 0 0.000 so I mean a negative zero is the same as a positive zero really one divided by one minus zero is still going to be one so that's great these guys match and that's my horizontal asymptote so let's try that one more time you have four terms here here's one two three and four 
the x with the highest power is, I mean, they're both x's with 1's, so let's divide each of those terms by x to the power of 1. Now we're going to reduce. x divided by x is negative 3 by itself. x divided by x, you're going to get the 2 by itself. And then these guys, since we can't break them down, let's just leave them alone. But when we start to do this process, which I didn't write, um, but if you take the negative 1,000 and positive 1,000 and we put them into here, these guys will disappear and become zeros or very close to a zero. So really the only numbers that really matter are negative 3 over 2. So that's going to be our horizontal asymptote. That's what I meant by the long way. Let's show you the short way now. Okay, so the short way is take your two x's. They have to have the same exponent. So if one's an x squared and one's an x, you can't do this, all right? So take your two x's with the highest degrees. They have to match. And then their coefficients, those are the numbers for your horizontal asymptote. And you're like, why did you go through that entire process before when there was such a shorter way? Well, you, you kind of need to know, like, this is just a shortcut, but you need to know, like, why it happens that way. So it just happens that everything else disappears and you just have those numbers at the end. Okay, so like here, you got a 1 that's invisible and a 1 that's invisible. So 1 divided by 1, it's going to be 1. So there you go. Your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so you can, I, I don't know, whatever your teacher says is okay, then you got to do it that way, I guess. All right, so here is a full-fledged, like, gigantic question, and this could be, like, a test question um, or a quiz question. And you're just going to have to analyze the entire thing. Okay, so let's get into it. Here's the equation that you need to sketch. So we want to know about asymptotes, domain and range, behavior around those asymptotes, maybe get some x and y intercepts in there, make a sketch, and then at the very end we got to talk about how it's going to increase or decrease. Okay, so let's get on the asymptotes. Here's our vertical asymptote, or where we're going to find it anyway. Our restriction is negative 5 over 2. That means that our vertical asymptote is x equals 2, negative 5 over 2. Then we have the horizontal asymptote. So like I said, I mean, you can do it the long way, which I showed, or you can just do it the short way, which is um, the x's are same degree. So let's just take the coefficients, 1 over 2. And notice that even though I did it the long way, you still get 1 over 2. All right, the next thing that they asked for b was domain and range. X is all the numbers except for your vertical asymptote because obviously your graph can't go there. So X is everything except can't be negative 5 over 2. Your horizontal asymptote tells you what your Y can't be. So your Y can be anything except where the horizontal asymptote is. So that's the domain and range. And already um, we're starting to see the graph. So if I scroll down to the graph, we have our vertical asymptote at negative 2.5, which is negative 5 over 2. And then we have our horizontal asymptote at 0 0.5. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we obviously want these behaviors, these end behaviors of the graph. So we're going to test with the table like that. And you guys already know how to do all this. Um, so we've tested and we've gotten these kind of results. All right, so when we go to our vertical asymptote from the right and left, we get negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay, so here's our vertical asymptote. From the right is negative infinity. From the left is positive infinity. Okay, now the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote says when I go towards infinity on the x axis, I'm going to go towards one half from below, and then the other direction is going to be one half from above. Okay, let's just check that out. Okay, so towards positive infinity, one half from below, and then negative infinity is one half but above. All right, so that means that we can start to connect our graph together. And if we wanted to be a little bit more accurate, you might want like an intercept in there. So let's calculate our intercepts. If you want the x intercept, you have to make your y value a zero. So there we go. Then you're going to start to solve for x. To do that, let's get rid of that fraction. This is a divide by 2x plus 5. Bring it to the other side to become the opposite, which is a multiply. But when we multiply those two, it's going to become 0. We still have that x on the other side. So x is equal to 0 when your y was 0. That means that's your horizontal, or sorry, your um, x-intercept. And we're going to put that right there. 
Okay, now this guy right here, if we put x equals to 0, that means all of our x's are 0. We're going to solve for our y, and well, this one's a lot easier to solve for, really. So your y is going to be 0 when your x is 0. And well, that kind of makes sense, because isn't that also a y-intercept? Okay, so this is your detailed graph. If you want to start looking at areas of increase and decrease, we're just going to start drawing um, either tangent lines or secant lines. So it looks like, I mean, if I get out my highlighter, um, always start from the left most one. So this one is a slightly steep slope, but then this one is even steeper. So as we go from left to right, we actually get an increasing slope. So let's again start with the leftmost, maybe this one. And that one doesn't, I mean, it looks steep, but this one looks less steep. So then this will be a decreasing slope. So it looks like in this general area, we have a decreasing slope from this region. And then this one's an increasing slope from this region. Okay, so why don't we just really quickly summarize everything. If we have a function that looks like this, your vertical asymptote will always be at the bottom, the negative d number divided by the c number. So we have something like that. And remember, you always have to start with x equals 2. Okay, now if you want your horizontal asymptote, an easy way to do that would be to take the coefficients in front of your x's um, or your x's with the highest degrees and put them on top of each other with a y in front. So that's going to be your horizontal asymptotes. If you want your x-intercepts, you have to look at the top because what's going to happen is this is going to become a 0 and this disappears when it multiplies to the other side. So your x-intercepts are going to be negative b over a. And then if you want your y-intercepts, you always plug in a zero for your x's, so these guys disappear and it ends up to be only these two that end up to be your y-intercept. Okay, so I mean these are all little tricks, but you don't have to do tricks. You can always just show all your work and solve them normally. Okay, so this very last slide, it just gives you a little bit more information. You can read through it. Um, the main slides just before were the summary that um, is the most important. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also post um, another video on 3.3, which is just a variety of different examples that you could get.